at Old Trafford, you're, you're on the bench, you, you come off the bench and in that moment in injury time, I think at the Stratford end as well, that, that header yeah. that seems to take an age to hit the crossbar, do you remember what you were thinking in that a split second, but it probably seemed like to begin minutes? With, to begin with, I, I was very disappointed to be on the bench, I played all the other rounds and we signed a lad called Willie Gibson, um, who signed after the draw had been made. So I found out afterwards that his agent had said that if he signed, he had to play against Man United. So he took my position in the side, which was disappointing to start with. But never mind. Um, yeah, I come on after um, about, I think it was 58 minutes. Um, Steve Evans put me on and Alex Ferguson put Wayne Rooney on. So <laughs> it was one of them. You're looking at him thinking, hold on, what's going on? But no, I, I remember it. It was, it was a corner. And uh, yeah, I still get goosebumps now thinking about it. And, uh, it was just, I've, I've done all I can do, headed back across goal and it, I'm suddenly thinking, oh Lord, it's going gonna, it's gonna to drop in here. Yeah. It, it had gone over Lindegaard, I'm thinking it's dropping in. And it's actually dropped down and Pablo Mills was there and it didn't even drop to anyone to put in. Mm. Um, and, I, and it was just like slow motion and, you know, that's one of the moments, if that had went yeah. in, would I be sitting here today? I don't know. Mm. But it's all ifs and buts and no, it, it, it's, it's great and... I'll never forget it, and people always talk about it, and it's nice and to hear the, the commentary again. Sometimes I, I get played the commentary, and it's it, it, it's really, really, you know, really hard one, really. And do you do you remember those? Big, you just highlighted some moments there of Brink coming along, coming on alongside Wayne Rooney, and that header. Do you, do you remember those games? Or some people say the big occasions kind of pass no, them by. I remember, I, I, I remember everything. Um, funny enough, I, I remember nearly all of the, of the games I've played in, in my career um, mm. and that day something else that stuck out in my mind that day bearing in mind there's 74,500 people there I'd moved away to Crawley down south and I hadn't seen my mum for five months and I, I was warming up and I seen my mum in the crowd you spot her in front of the 75,000 people and little things that stick in your memory mm. um, which, which was really nice too yeah and and then you move on to Fleetwood and you're involved in their best ever run and, and in the third round it the way these things do, it comes up with a, a local derby against Blackpool. And unfortunately, you weren't involved, but the atmosphere around around the town in that region, I guess, must have been really good. You say those communities yeah. coming together, yeah. kind of historically little Fleetwood against the the giants of Blackpool. Yeah, I couldn't even get a seat. Seriously, <laughs> I, I had to stand because um, a lot of Blackpool fans watch Fleetwood when yeah. Blackpool were at home, and a lot of Fleetwood fans don't watch Blackpool, mm -hmm. so it was it was really. And it was the first time they played in so many years uh, against each other. So that was history in itself. Um, we beat Gary Waddock's Wickham mm. in the second round. Um, and I've been sent off, so I, unfortunately I missed, I missed the cup tie, which was disappointing. Um, but, you know, there was a real buzz about the place. And a Premier League Blackpool, I think, beat us 5-1 on the day, which, which, you know. But then again, it was, it was the fleet with the best ever run. So you, you take pride in that itself. Although the game's disappointing. Are you expected to win? Probably not, no. And you've already mentioned it last um, last season. I think with going to Derby against Southport, that, those two thousand seven hundred fans and a one nil defeat. Southport took so much credit and plaud it's from that game. That yeah, whatever the respective respective form, however you're going in the league, the FA Cup, you'll always raise your game. Yeah, well, we were struggling at the time, and you you look back at the games before and. The fourth qualifying round was Tamworth away and you think, oh God, here we go. Um, we'll get a draw, come back to Southport, get a man sent off after 20 minutes and beat, and beat Tamworth on penalties. Mm -hmm. Then we draw Dagenham away, over two legs, beat Dagenham. Then you get Eastley at home on a Sunday. Um, we managed to beat Eastley 2-1 um, and they had a man sent off. So people forget all the rounds. Sometimes people forget the rounds up to the big occasion. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we wanted a Premier League side, but... At the time, there was no bigger club than Steve McLaren's um, Derby County. Um, and a compliment in itself was was nil nil, and he brought Chris Martin, Johnny Russell, and Jordan Ibe, I think, mm. as yes, a triple substitution. Yeah. So that, that's a compliment in itself. And I come off with ten minutes to go, and Steve McLaren come down um, on the touchline and was in the mumbling was. Uh, what's support like? What's the ground like? What's the dressing room like? He was resigned to the fact there was a replay, yeah. and then of course to get a penalty in the last minute, which is is the worst defeat possible in the last to a last minute penalty. Uh, but it brings everyone together, and 
and you know everyone remembers that, but the the, the, the reality of it is straight after you've got a league game. Mm. The game after Manchester United with Crawley, we had Southport at home on a Tuesday night, so you've got to bring yourself back down yeah. that level. So there's all these pros and cons that, that, that it's like a roller coaster ride. Mm. And now you say nobody remembers the, the maybe the, the fourth qualifying round, the third qualifying round, the first round that leads to the big tie, but tomorrow could be that game for shot town. You never know where an FA Cup run is going to come, but Sutton United will be a tough game. Of course it will. Um, but like I said before, we're in good spirits, uh, three unbeaten, um, two clean sheets, uh, lost one and five. And, um, although stats go out the window in the FA Cup, yeah. you, you've got to take something into the game. And As a group of lads and as a, as a squad, we, we're really confident we can go and do something. And it's about it's about getting in the next round. You know, the performance might not be great, uh, but we stick together like we have been, and, and we make sure we're in that draw because, like you said, you don't know where it can take you. And in three months' time, we could be sitting here in January, and we could have Arsenal away or something like that, which would be great. Or maybe Sunderland because I wouldn't mind if we get back at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the way, well, I won't say I won't say the way Sunderland are playing. We yeah. might have a chance, but exactly. but yeah, it's it is every chance for you know, the fans, the players, the clubs to dream of what might be. Of course it is, and um, you know you, you hear people whispering. Like I said, you walk around town, and you, you hear people whispering. It's FA Cup weekend, and mm. all of a sudden it, it brings a lot of people to come and watch the game. And let's hope we can get back up to that two thousand mark on Saturday. We'll, we'll, you know, attendance-wise, and give them something to cheer about, and just get get through that next round. That's the main thing.